The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Any health advice given, whether general, diet, physical or spiritual, is general only and must be verified by your doctor. If you need medical advice, please consult a doctor. Assalamu alaikum to all our listeners and viewers. Welcome to the latest edition of the Health and Fitness Show. I'm your host for today's show, Suleiman Rafiq, and this program is broadcasting from the studios of Inspire to FM, live today on Thursday, the 28th of March, 2019, at 6 p.m., casting its positive vibes to all the lovely people in Luton and surrounding areas. With our positive airways also reaching listeners via the Inspire FM website. You can also view us via Facebook and all you have to do for that is go to the Inspire FM Facebook page and click on our live link. If you're listening to this show on a Sunday or any other Thursday then it is a repeat. So, as you'll be aware, we cover different health information topics each week, and today's topic is in regards to men's health. So, any women listening may wonder what today's show has to offer them, but I'm sure all our listeners will either have a uh, brother, son, nephew, uh, husband or father that this topic can relate to, so please do stay tuned. What we've done for today is split the show into two halves. Uh, The first half, we will be talking with Larry Redmond, who is Deputy Director for Outreach at Luton South Beds and Harpenden Samaritans. And he will be discussing with us uh, the latest campaign, Real People, Real Stories. Larry, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you. And in the second half of the show, uh, it's my pleasure to say I'm joined by my very dear friend, uh, Nadim, who will be discussing a project uh, that we've both been involved with, and that's the Man V Fat Football League. Asalaamu Alaikum, Nadim. Wa Alaikum Asalaam, Suleiman. How are you? I'm very well, alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, both of you, for giving up your time uh, you know, in the, in the evening for our live show. So, before I continue, I'd like to remind listeners, this is your show please do get involved by calling 01582 481822 otherwise you can call or whatsapp on 0777 948 1822 that number again 0777 948 1822 and i really do appreciate uh, week in week out listeners getting in touch with their questions it really does help us and benefits the show so thank you so much for doing that Larry, I'd like to spend the first half of the show really talking about the work that you're involved with uh, from the the Samaritans and the campaign that's recently been launched. Just before we get on to the campaign, I mean, uh, uh, many of us would have heard of the Samaritans as an organisation, but can you just give us a bit of background exactly, you know, what what organisation they are, what exactly do they offer and how do they run? Okay, so Samaritans has been in existence for over 65 years. Um, It now has 201 branches around the UK and Ireland with over 20,000 listening volunteers. Uh, Typically, a listening volunteer will speak to people either on the phone, answering emails or texts with also face-to-face in the community. Um, this is to give people who, who need it somewhere where they can safely talk about their feelings, their worries and their concerns. The aim of the organisation is to be able to reduce suicide uh, over the long term. It's purely charity. The Luton branch in Cardiff Road has over 100 volunteers, wow. all of them uh, giving up their own time. And it is a charity and we have to raise all of the money to run the centre on our own, which is around about £36,000 a year. Okay, and it's, it's, it's quite amazing just to appreciate how many people are involved and how long it's been running for as an organisation and that we have a branch here in Luton specifically, yeah. uh, which is obviously there to support Lutonians. Mm-hmm. 
So can you just tell me, I, I heard, I've heard a little bit about it. I know you've had mm. some big uh, partners involved nationally, um, but just in regards to the campaign, uh, it's called Real People, Real Stories. Um, can you just tell me a little bit about the campaign? Yeah, so the campaign, Real, Real People, Real Stories, is an awareness campaign in conjunction with Network Rail. And it launched on the 19th of March. And the intention is, is to use stories from real people whether, who may have contacted Samaritans to explain to people, mainly uh, men between 20 and 59, the importance of sharing and how that to talk to somebody can help. So the campaign is uh, mainly around the stations, but also with talk radio and with other people to try and get people to actually understand, particularly males, the importance of, of, of sharing their stories and how they are and that type of thing. Mm, interesting. And so it's particularly focused on, uh, on men. And um, there was an age range that you, you um, yeah. mentioned there. What was that again? So the age range which it's focused on is 20 to 59. Mm. Uh, the reason for this is, is men uh, are three times more likely than women to die by suicide. And that particular age group are an age group which um, this particular campaign at this particular point is trying to contact because they're an age group and a group of people who don't tend to talk and are particularly find sharing mm. very, very difficult. Yeah. I mean, it was interesting when I was doing a little bit of research mm. for, for today's topic. Like you say, some of the statistics are really quite, um, quite interesting uh, in terms of uh, suicide being the biggest killer of men under the age of 50. Is that correct? Yes, the biggest killer under the age of 50. Um, and in the uh, 45, 49, it's actually an increasing uh, way of people dying, unfortunately. Mm. Um, and it's... It's an area where reaching out is 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 difficult, um, and the stats say that not only are seventy five percent of men who die of suicide compared to twenty five percent of women, but women are also much more likely to go and seek medical help. Sure. So um, you've got this combination of a group of people who don't seek medical help, mm. along with. Um, uh, their, I don't know if it's fear, but along with their reluctance mm. to to share. Yeah, it's interesting. And one of the reasons um, why I, I personally was so keen mm. to to have you on was um, a personal experience where a friend of a friend of mine shared um, that his cousin, who was in his twenties, mm. um, died by suicide, and this was just a few weeks ago. And so that really, um, for me. Um, put home a reality that there's there's a need for people to access support and there is support available in the UK and we're very fortunate that these services such as the Samaritans are are available for free of charge um, to to anyone that would like to access them um, so it's really helpful so how how was the campaign developed what was the kind of background behind the campaign so the campaign was developed from uh, the research which, which was done to show which groups and also which groups were not contacting um, and making use of the services. Um, this is also a group which, as you can see, this is supported by Network Rail and is a group which um, the suicides have occurred on the network system. So it was developed by looking at which groups were most at high risk, what were their tendencies to be, and then thinking about how could you best connect with them. So by finding real stories from real people, that's a, a, a very good way of connecting with individuals mm -hmm. because you can actually look and say, here's someone and I can relate to this person when I see them. Fantastic. And so if anyone wants to see any of those um, those stories, then they can um, visit your website. Uh, is that the best way of... Um, yeah, the, the, best, what, the best way of uh, going is on to www.samaritans.org. Um, there's also quite a large uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter. If mm. they look there and look for Samaritans, they will find and this campaign is there. They will also see it very much um, around the stations. Network Rail have given 
uh, free poster areas to Samaritans and you'll see the messages there and be able to follow through and there's some videos related to it. That's, that's that's really helpful and just when i was checking out the website it was interesting in terms of some of the research that samaritans mm-hmm. have done in relation to um some of the reasons why um uh why men are, are struggling and i think the number one from memory was around debt and financial concerns is that is that right yeah there's there's a lot of common themes of uh why men are particularly vulnerable and like you say debt or financial worries is is top but also relationship breakdown and family problems, isolation and loneliness, job loss and job-related problems, physical illness and and other bereavement. Mm. I think the thing with trying to understand why a particular person has died by suicide or is contemplating suicide is incredibly difficult. And all of us are unique individuals and um, there is no way of knowing what's going on in the other person's mind but they are factors which Mm. were happening in those people's lives at the time. Mm. And just just elaborating on that, in terms of, you know, like you highlighted 75% men, Mm. um, you know, because men, generally speaking, are are slightly more private in terms of some of the the points that you made in relation to, you know, finance or relationships. Um, So really in terms of for all of our listeners, um, are there um, any any signs listeners can look out for when so is someone close to them that m- may may be feeling uh, you know in, in a bad way? I, I think that the big thing is to look out for change. Um, is the person changing their habits? Have they in any way became restless or agitated? Um, are they more tearful than they would normally be? Are they not wanting to engage and talk with people? Um, not to do, want to do the things they usually do. Um, they, they may be using drugs to cope more. Um, they're finding it hard to cope with everyday things. They, they don't reply to messages. They keep themselves distant. They're all traits in people's lives that kind of says to you that there's something going on with those individuals that they're perhaps not sharing. Mm. But the thing is, is that people still die by suicide, even though they don't display those as well, because different people have different masks and they keep them more hidden. Right. And so... Actually, let me just remind our listeners that this is a live show. So, you know, please do get in touch with your comments, queries. Uh, you can do that by calling us on 01582481822. Otherwise, call, uh, you can text or WhatsApp us on 0779481822. 0779 so in terms of um, if someone is looking themselves to seek help, uh, where should men go to, to see, or men and women go to seek help for, from the Samaritans? Well, from Samaritans, there's a, we have a free phone number, 116123, which is free phone wherever you are, um, whether it's a mobile device or whatever. Um, it's also quite unique in as much that if you use this number, it will not appear on your phone bill. Okay. Um, that's quite important because often people don't want others to know that they've reached out. And the whole thing with Samaritans is the anonymity that, that we create in the safe place in which they can do. So like I say, the phone number is 116123. If you also go to the website, it will give you the email address, um, which is joe at samaritans.org. Um, so some people find that the written word is a better way of communicating. Quite often, um, it's much easier to put down your thoughts and feelings when you haven't got to react to a voice on the end of the phone, and some people find that um, a better way of doing it. Mm-hmm. They can also um, visit uh, Samaritan's branches. Um, so we will take face-to-face visitors during the day when we're open, the duties when we're open, um, so that's another way. But the, the main way really we find now is via the phone. Um, 80% of the calls we get are from mobiles, which means people have that privacy that they can 
have a uh, a call and talk to someone in a very safe environment. Mm, that's that's fantastic. So it's free on mobile as well. It's it's free. And it doesn't show on any on, on builds. No, fantastic. So. That's 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 really helpful mm. to know. Um, and just for, for people that are listening to this and may um, may be looking to support or engage with the campaign, um, you know, how can listeners support and engage with this specific campaign? I, I think I think the main way they can support is by if they see anyone in their environment who they feel um, make certain those people are aware that talking is a uh, the right thing to do, and knowing and um, relaying the Samaritans number to them and pointing people towards it. Um, also supporting Samaritans in any way in donations would, would help. That will allow us to, to be there. The unique thing we are is we're there 24-7. So people have to remember that they can call us at any time, any day, um, and we will, we will be there. So it's making people aware of it, pointing out to people that it's good to actually share and talk about your feelings and what may be distressing you. Mm. I mean, and that is quite a unique aspect of your service. It's 24-7, 365 days of the year. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, you know, any time people do need to reach out, then you are uh, available to, to help them with that. And it's completely confidential. So it's, it's, a, it's a really... Um, fantastic kind of service i'd just like to thank you mm. for you know and and your colleagues for all the work that you're doing to support everyone out there who's who's uh, you know who's need who's in need of this kind of support um i mean nadim you obviously work with a lot of men um you know is what you've heard uh, kind of rung any bells with yourself um <clears throat> yeah i mean a lot of similarities some of the signs you mentioned the reasons um the alarming percentage of that men come under the the issues of dying by suicide. Um, we we found that men don't tend to seek out seek out advice, uh, seek out help. They don't tend to go to um, their doctors and speak about it or ask for any support. It could be a stigma attached to it. it could be a masculine thing. Mm. Um, that the the reasons could be you know three fourfold, but ultimately. It is something which is an issue. Um, women tend to seek help more than men, and, and like Larry said, it, it, it definitely rings true with us as well. Um, and we found that once someone does engage with our program, um, not just the physical side, just the social aspect of it, mm. um, being able to speak to people in similar boat, some might have similar issues, which they may not have admitted to anyone before. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it definitely rings true with us as well. Yeah. That's interesting. And Larry, can you just touch on in terms of, you know, this might sound like a silly question, mm -hmm. but how, how is it that talking is so helpful in this situation? Um, I, th I think it's, first of all, it's not a silly question. Mm -hmm. um, probably uh, being a listening volunteer, one of the big things you notice when you, you talk to callers is often these, these thoughts which they're now verbalising, they've been running around inside their, their own head. The difficulty with that is if you keep asking yourself the same question, you get the same answer. And by being able to talk to another individual, it gives you a unique perspective. You're, you're talking to someone who is not going to judge you, is not going to give you advice, because what you'll find is most of your friends, when you ask them a question, they will tell you what they would do. Right. They're not often interested in listening to find out what is right for you. Mm -hmm. So the talking to someone in a very safe environment, which is non-judgmental, allows you to organise your thoughts in a way and may give you the opportunity to decide what is right for you, mm. not what somebody else thinks is right for you. Sure. And is there any kind of limit in terms of uh, when someone's talking to you, uh, in terms of what they're, what they're able to discuss or, you know, time that's able to discuss with them? How does that work in terms of the level of support they can access? So the, the level of support is, is what is right for the particular caller. Um, so y you can have a call which lasts 10 minutes and that can be right for that caller or you can have a call that lasts two hours. Mm. 
the important thing is that the caller is getting what they need from the call and they are working through their feelings, their emotions and their concerns in a safe environment. Sure. Time's really getting away with us and uh, I'm conscious that we do only have uh, a few moments left. I'd just like to thank, we've had a few messages in terms of, um, I've had a few messages in terms of people just saying that it's great that we're talking about this subject mm. and that, um, you know, this isn't something that we should kind of shy away from. Um, and it's, it's good to, it's good to talk as mm. we've, uh, as we've all kind of agreed on. Um, Larry, are there any kind of final messages that you'd like to share with our listeners in terms of this half and the campaign and how we can support the campaign? Yeah, I, I think the, the main thing I would always like to share about talking to the Samaritans is you don't have to wait mm until it's so desperate that you're suicidal that you call us. When you have emotional distress of any sort, the sooner you talk and share and work out what's right for you, the better it will be. And I think that if the campaign does anything, it's for people to look at what real people do mm. and how talking has helped them to solve real life problems yeah i'd highly encourage anyone that hasn't had a chance to go on the website just yet to have a have a look on the website there's some quite good youtube uh, mm. videos that um i found quite interesting and it's quite a diverse range of backgrounds that you've taken the real stories from yeah. um and it's really 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 insightful as well um i mean nadim do you have any kind of final reflections on on what's been discussed so far um i mean yeah i mean larry mentioned about speaking speaking early so mm. it, it's not something that we should encourage even if there are early signs and you're feeling a little low or you're feeling those thoughts early and you're not at the point of thinking about suicide but you're you're falling into light depression or you're having anxiety etc i think the earlier you do speak to someone um, the the more more likely you are to come back from something. Sure. Just had a quite specific question in relation to age uh, uh, ages. I mean, is there a, a lower limit to to people that are able to access the service? Is it only for adults? Or no, it, the service is open to anyone who can use a phone effectively. Right. So we will have callers into their eighties, nineties, and we will have children callers. Really? Um, yes, and children often call because. It is anonymous, mm -hmm. and therefore they are able to have that conversation with an adult who is not going to direct them or point them in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. So, no, there is no age limit to it. It's just the capability, and obviously if they verbally struggle, um, they can always write and therefore use the email, and that gives them another, another route um, to do it. So, no, there is no limitation in any way or form. Great. And so you say the campaign's been supported by Network Rail, yeah. uh, which is uh, which is good. And I know there's been some celebrity endorsements as well, haven't there? Yeah, we've had we've had celebrity endorsements. Um, recently, uh, John Bishop has been on to Facebook and supporting the, the work and, and others are on talk radio. Mm. So it's a, it's a good campaign. It will run in effect for probably two years. Um, so it will diff do different aspects, and this first aspect is concentrating on on males. Fantastic. Well, we'd love to um, have you back on as the campaign kind of further develops, and um, there might be a additional aspects to it that we would be able to discuss. Um, so hopefully we can kind of continue this conversation uh, with yourself. Um, and just in relation to you were saying that as an organisation it relies on, Samaritans relies purely on volunteers, is that right? Or it's predominantly volunteers? Um, in the Luton branch there's yeah. over 100 people and uh, apart from paying for a caretaker for a few hours, everybody else gives up mm. their time uh, and efforts completely. So yes, the, the organisation is very much run by the volunteers for the callers yeah that is really quite phenomenal isn't mm. it that an organization can run like that and that's kind of commitment and dedication that your colleagues are, are providing to the service um larry we're going to be moving on now in relation to after the advert break and the adan break we're going to be talking uh, about a program very dear to my heart and many listeners will know about this and it's man versus fat football are you are you guys are you both football fans i, I know nadine's a football fan unfortunately for him 
Are you a football fan, Larry? Uh, yes, and yeah. uh, obviously following the local team at the moment and hoping yeah. the promotion is just around the corner. Fantastic. It looks that way, doesn't mm. it? It looks that way. So we're going to be talking about um, a league that will be... Season 7 will be starting uh, next week. That's right. Yeah. yeah, so stay with us because we'll be talking about that. We'll also be joined on the phone by some of the players of the league. Um, we're going to have Avas and Hasnan who will be joining us on the phone uh, to discuss that. And uh, as I say, I've, it's something I've been involved with as well. So I'm a huge uh, advocate of it. So please do stay with us um, as we approach these short advert breaks and the Adan break. And we'll be talking about the details of the man versus fat football league that's being held here in Luton has been running for a number of years and has proven to be extremely successful in supporting men to lose weight so please do stay with us assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh you're listening to an inspire fm podcast making available our popular programs from our daily broadcast on inspire fm Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all our listeners and viewers. Welcome back to the Health and Fitness Show. Uh, I'm your host, Suleiman Rafiq, for this evening, and today we are discussing men's health. This program is broadcasting live on Thursday, the 28th of March 2019, from the studios of Inspire FM. So, Good evening. Welcome back. I'm delighted to say that we've got uh, Brother Nadeem in the studio. Asalaamu Alaikum Nadeem. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. How are you? Alhamdulillah. I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. Good. Fantastic. And can you clarify your role with the Man vs. Fat Football League? Uh, Yes, I'm lead coach here in Luton um, in the Weight Loss Football League running out of Lee Manor. Fantastic. How long have you been doing that for? Um, This is my third season um, coming up to a year now. Great, great, great. And we should hopefully have my good friends uh, Avas and Hasnan on the phone. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us. I appreciate you dialing in. Um, so today's show has all been based around men's health and in the first half of the show we had um, a fantastic guest Larry from the Samaritans who discussed with us real people uh, real stories campaign for anyone that missed that I'd highly recommend that you check out their website or you can hashtag online real people's real stories just to see um, exactly what that campaign is all about and hopefully I was just discussing with Larry in the break that we'd love to have him back on Um, to discuss kind of future campaigns based around the work, the great work that they're doing in Luton and nationally. The second half of the show is going to be exclusively focused on a project that is very close to my heart, um, or or should I say more accurately, very close to my waistline. (laughs) You like that one, Nadine? I like that. Avas, you like that one? Nah. (laughs) But in all seriousness, Man vs. Fat Football is a phenomenal uh, project, program. You know, it's changed my life. But less about me, more about the you guys in terms of um, people that have been success stories on the program. I've already had messages from some of the guys that have been on the league um, in relation to some of the success that they've seen. So we're going to be discussing that in detail um, to take us through up until seven o'clock so Nadine before I, I, I want to come to a Vasin Hasnay in just a moment but before I do that just explain for people that may not have heard about Man V Fat Football exactly what it is sure um, <clears throat> essentially we're a weight loss we're a weight loss football league basically means uh, it's a weight loss program um, combined with a football uh, league in itself so it's um, you're able to put yourself through a 15-week weight loss program whilst playing football and trying to win a football league at the same time. The way we combined it is you not only score goals on the pitch, Mm. but you also score goals by losing weight on the scales. Um, It's a weekly program. Like I said, it covers a a 15-week weight loss program, which um, ultimately is approved to ensure healthy weight loss over a mid sort of range period fantastic and i just want to come to a vas uh and hasnan who are you you're both members of the league at present um i mean Avas, can i start with you why why did you sign up to the league 
Um, just generally, over the years, uh, not being in the best of shape, um, trying to reduce my weight, and uh, my brother, elder brother, had a bit of health scare, um, which made me contemplate a lot of things about trying to get into shape and just be fit and better for it. Mm. And Hasnan, what about yourself? Uh, for me, it was a um, combination of the football and also getting healthier. Um, as, you, as you start working, you get less and less time for things like football. Mm. And um, I like the merge of playing football and also just um, healthier lifestyle as well. Fantastic, fantastic. And what would you say from your perspective, what's the, uh, you know, what's the hardest thing about um, you know, the league? Uh, for me, uh, I would say the best thing about it is to treat it as not just the weight loss challenge, but um, as more of a lifestyle change. Mm. Um, and for me, the hardest, when I had the first joined the league, I wasn't sure of the, the level that the rest of the guys would be at. Um, didn't know what to expect, but I've been pleasantly surprised. It's at a very good level, uh, the games, and they're quite intense and difficult at times. But it, that's what brings the enjoyment out because it's more about weight loss than football. But in this league, it's really good because both have an equal uh, footing. Fantastic. And, and how does how does Nadim support you? you can be honest because you're not you know you're on the phone. You're uh, you're not in the studio. I mean, what's he like as a coach? What does he do exactly? Uh, Nadim, uh, very good. He's very clear what he explains what you have to do, and he has a look at your food diary which you fill in over the week and uh, let us know areas where we could improve or areas where we're doing well. And um, I think communication has been very good so far. And um, yeah, it's been enjoyable. I've, I've only been in the, uh, I've been doing it about, I just started the new season, but I was um, uh, in the cup run, which was about four weeks. Mm. And um, so far it's been um, yeah, a really good experience. Fantastic. But, and Avas, from your perspective, how successful has it been from that that weight loss uh, element? You know, you mentioned there that you recognised that you need to you needed to kind of get into shape. Have, have you been able to to lose weight? Yeah, so for me, it's been a really good uh, project uh, uh, and weight loss plan. Uh, I started off with um, uh, joining with just losing minimal weight. I've done other diets before where you lose a lot and then you pile it back on slowly. Mm. But with this, um, it's got me into positive thinking and I'm going to the gym more because uh, I don't want to let my teammates down. At the same time, I'm trying to be more healthy and conscious of what I'm eating. And for me, for the, just the first season alone, uh, I lost 6.4 kilos wow. of weight. Um, and I hit you. What, what's also good is not just per game. You get targets, uh, 5% and 10% targets off your overall weight loss mm. um, and I achieved the 5% in the last game um, and in effect that equals out to being a hat trick on the pitch mm. before you even kick the ball and that incentive was really good because for a game that we had like a cup final we started with a healthy lead um, but I, I give all to Nadim on the support there's a lot of things that I was doing which were good initially but um, they needed tweaking uh, or fine tuning in terms of uh, breakfast and just making me understand a bit more about what I should be eating and when I should be doing that. Sure, sure, um, absolutely. So that's, that, that support's been appreciated um, and overall contributed to my thinking and being more positive in and healthy really yeah i mean it's interesting you mentioned that in terms of how it supports you not just in terms of from the uh, physical health perspective but from feeling better about yourself and you know uh, that kind of positive self-esteem uh, really is, is something is that something that your teammates have kind of felt as well do you think are the guys in the league yeah so um uh, fortunately we've got a great team i will have to give them a mention expected to lose um they are all very supportive, but I think we've got a, a good bunch of lads and we all support each other. We always push in each other. Um, my good friend Jake always messages to see how I've done over the week. Um, and it's sort of like working together as teamwork as well. Mm. Um, and it, and it's, I know it's about football, weight loss, but socially as well, just getting to know other people from different backgrounds um, and supporting each other for a common goal, which is to lose weight. 
Absolutely. And uh, it's quite a nice, it's quite a diverse kind of group, you know, in terms of a range of different kind of backgrounds and, you know, different uh, professions and different, different, you know, walks of life people have come from and all coming together and playing football. It's, it's really positive. Another one of your teammates has messaged me to say that <laughs> Robson uh, has lost one stone, three pounds in six weeks. So uh, that is quite that is quite something, isn't it? So that's that's quite an achievement there. Uh, I mean, Nadim, uh, on average, what what are people? What are the guys losing? And you know, how successful is it for the average guy? I mean, and on average, in terms of weight loss itself, it really does depend on what you start on. Um, we try to aim for five uh, percent and ten percent of your body weight um, in the fifteen week program. Mm. Um, it's a healthy period and a sustainable sustainable percentage it's it's not too extreme but at the same time it's something you have to work towards so it's not too easy either um so five percent we try to i try to break the season down from um five percent maybe the sixth week right. so week six is usually a good a good target to hit five percent where you're eager at the beginning um you make a lot of the big changes um, and your body responds and you can lose the 5%. You've then got um, an additional seven to eight weeks to then go ahead and hit your 10% before the season's out. So we're talking total percentage body weight as opposed to weight itself. Mm. At the same time, very conscious in a 15-week program, you don't want to lose too much weight. If you lose too much too quickly, ultimately it's not sustainable um, and you know, there, there's opposite opposite risk to that as well Mm, absolutely so listeners it's a live show today so before we continue with the questions and comments i'd like to remind you this is your show please do get involved by calling 01582481822 or you can text or whatsapp us on 0779481822 0779481822 so, Nadine, we're very fortunate we have a league in Luton. Where exactly and when are the sessions? Um, so, we play out of Lee Manor Rec Centre, um, North World Drive. It's near Marsh Farm. Um, it's the same f- uh, facilities that Lee Manor High School use. Um, so, the leisure centre itself <laughs> is where we have the weigh in room. Um, so, you come in before your sessions, before your game kicks off, um, get yourself weighed in. We have a chat. Um, and then you go make your way over to the AstroTurf pitches um, at Lee Manor itself. Sure. And what about if people just want to get a bit more information, not, might not necessarily want to commit? Uh, what's the best way of doing that? Uh, I mean, they, there is a website. You just need to go on our homepage, which is www.manvfatfootball.org forward slash Luton. Um, you can contact me via the page or you can have a look at the page itself. Um all the tables are live, uh, updated after every match. Uh, there's top scorers uh, on, on the fixtures, uh, results from the season. There's also, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's um, uh, photos for the last few seasons, um, current season. So you'll find yourself, yourself, Solomon, you, you, I think you'll, you'll be appearing on, on one of those photo slideshows. That's good to know. That's good to know. Alhamdulillah, I, I personally, I, I'm a huge advocate of this uh, of this program. Over a, a six month period, I personally uh, lost just over two stone, and uh, more, importantly, more importantly, more importantly, I think it's around um, Alhamdulillah feeling physically, you know, much fitter, uh, you know. I know Avas and Hasnan and myself, we're in similar situations. We busy jobs, you know, busy families, busy lives, lots of different commitments going on. But really to take uh, these Monday evenings out and to really take that stock and take an opportunity to really um, improve your health and well-being. And, you know, it's related to so many conditions, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, etc. But more importantly for me, it's just, alhamdulillah, feeling a lot better. So I'd like to take this opportunity just to thank you 
and my teammates, uh, including Avas and Hasnain, that really supported me on my journey uh, in being able to do what I've done. And hopefully, now that it's been publicly announced live on radio, I have to stick with it now. There's no excuse for... No, no excuse you know I mean? falling back into For those guys watching on Facebook Live, you know, <coughs> keep a track over weeks and how it's going. I mean, um, Avas, uh, from your perspective, um, you know, uh, how, much is it, how much is it costing? Um, in terms of, uh, so one thing I will say is that um, there's a lot of players that come from a variety of different areas. Uh, as far as Hemel Hempstead, um, I spoke to, spoke to a player that came from Shenley. So in terms of getting there and stuff, that's the, that's the additional cost of what we pay per month. Mm. But um, in terms of playing football, most people will know that if you play football anywhere, uh, the minimum that you pay is normally five pound per session yeah. with your friends for a kick about. This is actually a proper league. It's um, it's organised. You have referees there. You have an half an hour slot in which you play your game. Um, it's played at a good level, and the overall cost a month is twenty five pounds, hmm. um, which at first some people think is quite a lot in a, a month. But in terms of when you break it down for what you're getting for that value, you're getting nutrition assistance with that. On top of that, you're playing football. Um, you're getting to meet new people. Um, and it's keeping you fit, which is the most important thing. Mm, absolutely. And I think as well, it's like, Hasnain, as we're, as we're getting older, it's just that having someone organising the uh, organizing the football and getting the guys together is often, you know, the hardest bit on these uh, non, non-stop WhatsApp groups. Uh, is yeah. that one of the reasons you've got involved? Yeah, definitely. Because like, as, you, as you start working, you get less and less time. You need... You need someone else to be putting in the effort, to be honest, or organising mm-hmm. games and, and that kind of stuff. Nice. Because um, weeks go by and then it um, then it becomes months and you haven't done any sort of physical activity um, as someone is sort of used to doing activity sort of three, four times a week and then and then going down to sort of zero. Mm-hmm. It, it makes a big difference. And um, I think the best thing for me about Manifat that is, uh, is the shared aspect of, like, of everyone... For the whole team trying to trying to improve and taking each other on to do to do to lose the weight, mm. and um, obviously you get a football session at the end of it as well, because uh, which you can fit in. Fantastic, and because the email I saw something it's like ninety something percent of guys. What is it? Uh, ninety six. Ninety six. So well, ninety five is the national uh, average of participants of manly fat lose weight. Um, and 96 was our last season's Luton um, average. Fantastic. Um, so Luton is above the national average. In uh, yeah, a good way. yeah, absolutely. Fantastic, fantastic. It's really great to hear. And how many guys? I mean, how many guys are involved in the league at the moment? Now, at the moment, we're up to around 60. Okay. Um, there's six teams at the moment uh, in the league. Yeah. Um, ultimately, uh, it revolves around a weight loss program of 15 weeks. So obviously, th- there are some finite. Um, numbers that the league could go up to, but there's plenty of room for growth at the moment. Fantastic. And so s- tell us about this start of the new season. Oh, so the new season uh, kicks off on Monday with the first set of fixtures. Um, we just had a re- presentation night last Monday, um, which you missed your um, your medal for achieving your healthy BMI last season. So I need to get, award you that today. I brought it with me, actually. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so this week is the new season. Um, we've got still got a few people are getting in touch, trying to register. Great. There's a few spaces left still to start. Um, and like I said, th- there's room for growth if you want to get involved and get started at the beginning of this season. Just need to get yourself on the website. Sure. Um, put in a little inquiry and I'll get back to you. Fantastic. So just for clarity then, new season started on the 1st of April 2019 at Lee Manor Recreation Centre. At 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock. And to get onto the website and drop you a message to let them know that you're coming down. Yep. Um, and that's the best way to get Absolutely. involved. Uh, Avas Hasnain, from your perspective, you know, are there any guys that you've come across that might feel as though they're not fit enough to play or they've got some, you know, when we're getting to a certain age, you get certain injuries and stuff. I mean, how do you cope with that as a team? Uh, well, in the squad, you have quite a few players. Um, so you do sub if, you don't, if you're not quite feeling up to it. Me and uh, Robson, like you mentioned in the game, I wasn't feeling too well in one of the games. Me and him alternated quite a lot in the match. Mm. Um, gives the team fresh legs. In terms of people who... What, one thing I did want to say uh, while I've got the opportunity is 
is that a lot of people might have a taboo around going somewhere where there's going to be just a group of people trying to lose weight. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's sometimes something that people might feel embarrassed about or not not most comfortable with. Mm. But for me, no one's ever made it feel like, oh, you're overweight, you don't want to be here kind of thing. It's been so positive and welcoming. Um, and especially my teammates, you know, I think I should tell say all of them, Chris, Tim, uh, Barry, Anthony, um, Robson, Robbie, and Jake. Sounds like an awards awesome. ceremony. I was going to say, you thank your mum as well. But, they, but they, so they've all been so uh, so welcoming yeah. and never made you feel like you're out of place mm. or anything. So I would say to people around, anyone that thinks that, or they love football and they want to play football even with a, with a mind of trying to lose weight and be a bit more healthy. Mm. This is definitely the, the the one for you. Yeah, no, that's that's really helpful. And obviously the weather's getting better as well, right? So mm. I remember when I was doing it, it was like snowing, and uh, <laughs> you know it wasn't. It, sometimes the weather wasn't so great, but now I'm like we've got longer nights and, and the clock's, uh, the clock's getting. Mm. Uh, and so um, that, that's 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 really helpful. I mean, what's the and uh, Nadine? What's the most uh, you know from your kind of headline from Luton, what's the most people have lost or, you know... Um, um, uh, so we've got... Um, stars on the show? Yeah, there's a few stars. I mean, um, a couple of seasons ago, a gentleman lost 15% of his body weight. Yeah. Um, in terms of s- stones, we're, t- we're talking... Cool. We're talking in, in the d- double figures, mm. 10, 10 to 11 stones, etc. So... Some major major stories. There's a we had this player that also um, reversed his uh, diabetes as well. Wow! Um, so these these are the more sort of more notable stories. Mm, fantastic. We'd love to have you all on again at the start of the next season. But for anyone listening, there's a real opportunity. Act now. Get onto the website, Man vs Fat Football, uh, Lee Manor Centre, and the sessions are starting on Monday. Just like to say Jazakallah Khair to Nadim uh, and Avas and, and Hasnam for joining us on today's show. Congratulations. Well done on the work that you've done. Uh, if you've missed any of today's show, then please don't worry. You can still catch us online or via our Facebook page and until next time Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Thank you for listening to our podcast Why not tune in to our live stream at inspirefm.org and follow and subscribe to our social media platforms at inspirefmluton